Hello, today's episode is brought to you by the back of Ryan Presley's baseball card. He may not be pitching this well, super well this year, but let me tell you, I've got stats to prove it right here. And we've got baseball cards of other players to prove that this Astros team is really good on this edition of Locked on Astros. Jainel Diaz, this is Locked on Astros. to Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H-Town Wheelhouse Chansey. We are Locked On Houston Astros and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on X at Eric Talk Astros. Find the show at Locked On Astros, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. Give us a big fat thumbs up and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcasts. Go ahead and check out the Locked On Astros podcast and go ahead and check out Michael Connor after every game doing the Locked On Astros postcast live. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Uh, it's kind of addicting. It's kind of fun to do, guys. Uh, but it's the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use the code all or lowercase locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. And uh, Brett, where can you find you at when you're not playing with your baseball cards? <laughs> when I'm not playing well with my baseball cards. They're action figures. They're not dolls. <laughs> this is H-Town Wheelhouse. You can find me at, at uh, on, I would say at X. You can find me at H-Town Wheelhouse on X, Instagram, and TikTok. You can find me at Back to the Bullpen on Instagram as well. You can find me at Stros411 on Facebook and on X. Look, always positive, always Stros. And Eric, you know, we have the first question of the day is where they are. Where are the Astros? What What is going on? Is this a conglomeration of losing Dusty and Maldonado. Will this team ever come out of the basement? They have the worst start since 2016. Justin Verlander is coming back, but we've been told that he's not the savior to all. But what does fan graph still have to say about the Houston Astros? And I think our fans and our listeners are going to like to hear. That's why we try to put a positive spin on it. Now, we're not ignoring the glaring issues that this club has, but we do believe that there is still hope and we can see the forest through the trees. Okay. I see what you did there. So the Astros do have a lot of good things going for them there. If you're looking at the statting wise, uh, we're going to talk about stats right now and where they sit. So if you're looking at the hitting wise, uh, they are they are tied with the Baltimore Orioles at the moment with the second the best OPS in the American League. They've got the uh, they're tied for third best uh, OPS in baseball. Only the Braves and the Brewers have a better OPS than the Houston Astros. So if you're looking at hits overall, they are second uh, to the Dodgers. They have 188 hits. They have they are what. Uh, Four third are tied with, uh, I guess they're tied with four other teams for third place with uh, 24 home runs. So they are scoring some runs. They are uh, getting hits. They are doing some things. The batting average, I know a lot of people don't like to look at batting average. Their batting average is third best in baseball with the 268 batting average. They are doing things at the plate. But why do they have a six in uh, 14 record? Here is why I went ahead and searched by with runners and scoring position. Mm. Can you guess where they rank in terms of all 30 teams? Where do they rank in terms of batting average? I'm going to, I'm going to give them a little bit of leeway 27th. Uh, no, they're actually not that bad. They are 17th oh. overall. Uh, oh. They have a 254 batting average runners in scoring position. Really? Only the White Sox, uh, the White Sox have a 142 batting average. The Twins have a 144 batting average. The Blue Jays have a 204 batting average runners in scoring position. So now I'm going to switch to OPS. Where do you think they are with OPS? Oh, OPS. I think they're like number one. I think they're probably number two now. No, uh, in terms of scoring position. 
with oh, runners in scoring yeah. position. Well, if Risk. they're 256, um, then they're right. They're 17th there. Maybe they're a little bit higher. Maybe they're 10th. They're Ooh. lower. They're at okay. 19th place. They're 19th. Okay. See, I was, I was, I was trying to go against my own theory that they were all just like, look, that's, you know, and this is what's six eighty six. This is six. What do you say? 686? Yeah. OPS. It's not yeah, it's terrible. Not. It's, um, it's kind of a, if an average baseball player is 700 or so, it's not it's, terrible, but it's not a winning baseball team. <laughs> that, that explains the six in the six and 14 record. Look, they've gotten hits. I mean, mm -hmm. they had 13 hits and three runs in a game. Um, and we said it on the previous episode. All three of these games against the Braves were very winnable. I mean, when you give up 11 runs from the eighth inning on against the Braves in a three-game series, you're probably not going to win that game. The starters pretty much did their job. The bullpen pretty much did their job. It was whoever was last on the mound just kind of fucked it up a little bit, you know? And it's just one of those things where it's frustrating. And if you saw the press conference with um, Alex Bregman, his quiet demeanor, his right. just, yeah, we've got to execute. It comes out of execution. And I remember him answering that question for me last year when I talked to him going back to the World Series. He said it comes down to execution. And that may seem blasé and, and kind of cliche, but that's what it is. It's not executing when the moment calls you to execute. And so right. until they start putting at least two or three of those together, because Eric, if they get two or three hits here or there, they easily beat that. They beat the Braves two games out of three. And we, oh, the Astros have turned it around two out of three against the Rangers, two out of three against the Braves. Right. Things are looking good. Now it's like, oh, no, the sky's still falling. All right, guys, uh, listeners, I'm going to give you all a chance to interact with the show. I'm going to ask Brett a question. Before I do, I'm going to ask you. So in the chat, go ahead and answer this question. Who uh, do you think has a higher ERA, the Astros starters or the Astros relievers? And so while they're going typing that in, Brett, I'm going to ask you, who has a higher ERA, the Astros relievers or the Astros starters? You cannot look it up, sir. No, I'm, I'm looking around in my mind. The Astro relievers of the well, I just think because of you know sample size and fewer mm -hmm. innings, I think the Astros relievers have a higher ERA. Okay, so you're going to relievers. All right. Yeah. So the Astros starters this year are four and seven with a five point zero five ERA. Okay. They have allowed a uh, two sixty four batting average. They have a WHIP of one fifty six. That's okay. their starters. So let's go to the relievers. The, oh, by the way, that starters are 26 overall in baseball. 26. Wow. You're talking about a starting rotation that in the first week was the best in baseball. Yeah. And it just what? plummeted uh, so quickly. It's just amazing how much time. So now let's go to the bullpen. The bullpen is two and seven with a 5.47 ERA. They have allowed a 262 batting average and have a whip of 144. So the so bullpen you, has a higher ERA. Okay, right. yeah, it's not. Just so I was by like, dad. Yes. Well, but but I think that might play out a lot of times simply because you know, like you've got your closer that has a nine something. I mean, if if one guy goes in and gets one inning and gives up five runs, he's got an ERA of 135 kind of thing, right? right. So. Um, math most of the time I think plays out in my favor on that question, but go ahead. What's you got any more uh quizzes for me, sir? Um, not not really, but I do want to point out the fact to go off that. Uh, if you just look at the Astros big three relievers, look at their ERAs, that's basically tells you the story of the Astros 2024 season so far. But fan graphs they have a different story to tell, and it's a more positive one. And if you're going to model the Astros 2024 season, you're really going to, I'm sorry to say it, but you're going to have to look at 2016. And it's not entirely a bad thing. The Astros, let me just say this, they're really going to have to play really good against a certain team in the AL West this year. And we'll talk about that in a second. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Download the app today and use the promo code Locked on MLB for your first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Available in thirty states, including California, Texas, 
in Georgia. Why do I mention that? Because I myself play prize picks. And today I've mixed two basketball players and two hockey players for a four, four pick play that could log me up to $150. Nikolai Jokic, Bradley Beal, Nazim Kadir from Calgary, and Mark Andre Fleury from Minnesota. That's right. I've got some great picks going. And if you want to get in the action, you can. It doesn't matter. Even if you don't want to pick alongside me, you can pick alongside Meek Meal or Sugar Shane O'Malley. If your player gets injured in the first half, doesn't come out in the second half, they won't count it against you. It has great weekly promotions, easy gameplay, quick withdrawals, and an enormous selection of players and stats for you to choose from. So I need you to go today to get the app and use the code Locked On MLB for your first deposit match up to one hundred dollar. Pick more, pick less. Go with Prize Picks today. Hey guys, thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. Go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to podcasts. Go and check us out. Go and check out Locked On Sports Day. It's the first ever twenty four seven streaming platform out there, and now you can watch that. You could watch on Locked On Astros. You can watch Locked On Astros postcast all on Amazon Fire TV. That's right. You can watch us on your TV, not just your computer, not just your uh, cellular phone anymore. You can watch it there. So go and check that all out. And uh, you can catch baseball talk all season. And we are all Astros fans. We're going to be watching this. And uh, we know that Ryan Presley is better than this. We know that Josh Hader is better than this. We saw a much better Josh Hader in yesterday's game, his movement, the stuff on uh, the velocity, everything was so much better in, uh, in Wednesday's game. And so I think that Josh Hader, he hasn't been used in a lot of quote unquote, save situations. Right. So when you have a closer, that's not closing. He's just being thrown in all these awkward situations where he's been thrown in a game like four times without the lead. Uh, Brian Abreu, he's still trying to kind of find his way this year. But Ryan Presley, this is a guy the Astros have had for a while. And I know you have the baseball card that's going to fix his season, right? Yeah, I mean, if you look at the back of his baseball card, Eric, this guy's a really good relief pitcher. I mean, well, 30, 31 saves, 33 saves, 26 saves all in the last three years. So why worry? He's got a great baseball card. That's what we're told. That's that's the that's the mantra. Hey, look, that's, that's the team's messaging, not mine. Um, I think with the Brayu, it's a little bit callous and it's a, it's a little bit deflective. Um, I would like the team to say, look, Abreu's struggling right now. He's not happy about it. We're not happy about it, but we're going to work to get him worked out. You don't need to talk about what the guy's done in the past because it doesn't matter. Like when you go up to the plate, they don't, they don't chunk you a ball down the middle of the plate because, oh, you know what? You're former VP. Let me just throw you a meatball so you can take it out of the park. Right. So back to the baseball card talk, I think is a little, I think it's a bad look. No, it is a bad look. It's to me, it doesn't give me the confidence that I have, that I still have, that I have had in Joe Espada, but more stuff like that makes me think, well, maybe we really don't have a grasp on this team the way we think the Astros should, because at the end of the day, it's what have you done for me lately? Every time it's not, you know, I even tell players, What's more important, what the most important thing is when you're in the batter's box is that pitch that's coming, not the pitch that you didn't hit, not the last at bat, not the last 10 games. It's this pitch, this moment. And that's what you got to do. You can't go, well, if you look at his past, the dude's a really good dude. And have you seen the stuff he does off the field and blah, blah, this. Okay, that means nothing. The messaging comes across weak. The messaging comes across like Aaron Boone saying, well, you know, if the roof was closed, we, you know, it sounds like an excuse. Right. We know that Abreu is a professional. We know that Presley is a professional. We know that Abreu, both Abreu's and Hater are both professionals. They have got to perform up to expectations. That's why they're getting paid. What that sounds like to me is uh, we don't know how to fix it. Uh, we we just assume that he's going to fix himself and we're just going to have to wait till that. And so instead of looking at the back of the 2022 baseball card to see what Jose Abreu did, look at the back of the 2025 baseball card. What has he done this season? And it has not done. It has It's not helping him. Jose Abreu is not the only issue on this team. There are many issues that we can address later. 
but he is not helping that that looking at that ball that he messed uh he messed up on yesterday it wasn't just on him there was a ugly little bounce on that and so yes it was an error but still it was an ugly bounce that kind of ate him up but at the same time uh, there's uh they're not playing Joey Loperfito at first base he's only played four games there in AAA so if he's the answer at first base the Astros don't seem to think so because he's not playing down there no right and I understand that and um, I actually put that up there. I put that clip and I kind of tried to deflect some of the blame of him on that. But there were some actual good counters. Um, former Division One baseball players, um, former coaches that had said, look, I get that that's an ugly bounce. But the way that you're supposed to like stand and approach the ball, he didn't even do that right. And so right. you can nitpick and you can pick apart pretty much every mistake that these teams make. I mean, heck. We haven't even talked about that much. I know we highlighted it, but you haven't heard anything about Bregman's outstanding defensive play where he backed up all the way to the back of the dirt and threw out, you know, the run at first. So there are bright spots, but man, it's it's tough. But Eric, tell us about these fan graph pro projections because it's actually, they must be always positive, always strows over there. <laughs> well, maybe they listen to Locked on Astros podcast. Well, uh, so the Astros right now, they have a negative 23 run differential. They have uh, scored 4.35 runs per game. They have allowed 5.5 runs per game. So uh, the fan graphs is projecting them to go. You ready for this? 78 and 64 for the rest of the season to finish with the 84 and 78 record which uh, I'll have to go back and look, but I'm pretty sure that's exactly what they had in 2016 because they started with the same rec record, six and 14, and they finally got to 30, 30, 500 around June 16th or so. And then they went on a little winning streak at the end. And so they finally got things together. They dealt with a lot of injuries that year. I remember I, if I remember correctly, that was the season that a, play, a pitcher that we will not name, um, kind of carry the Astros, if I, I remember correctly. But they're projecting the Astros to score 5.07 runs the rest of the way, as, uh, allow only 4.55 runs per mm -hmm. game for a plus 74 run di differential for the rest of the year. So meaning they're going to finish with a plus 51 run differential for the year. This is not yeah. what the Astros are used to, for sure. No. No, but but if you, I mean, but if you look at this, um, you look at that coupled with this graph right here, and I'll explain what this graph is to those of y'all that aren't watching that are listening, is it has 2024 um, AOS playoff odds. The Astros have been on top pretty much the entire time. Right now, the Astros have the highest percent chance of winning the West or making the playoffs from the AOS, 58.9%. Mariners at 48.8%. The Rangers are behind in third, 41.3%. The Angels at 15.1% and Oakland at 1.5%. So I think with these projections, I think with the projected record, us tied with Mariners. I haven't even told them that yet. Oh, well, hey, we're tied with the Mariners in that record. Yeah, let me tell this. Yeah. So um, the projected uh, finishing for the AL West, I know this is all projected – projection based on numbers and everything uh, is that the Astros and the Mariners will both finish with 84 and 78 record to end the season. The Rangers will have an 82 and 80 record. The angels will have a 79 and 83 record and the A's will have a 72 and 90 record. So you might be saying, Oh, uh, well maybe that'll be good enough for two teams to go to the wild card. Probably not. We'll talk about that in a second. So it's, if the Astros were to tie, it is very important for them to have that tiebreaker. So the Astros have got to uh, beat up on teams in AL West. If this is going to be a close battle this year, you got to beat up on the Rangers. So technically they're up in a silver boot right now uh, by one game. I, we haven't played the Mariners yet, but it's very critical that you go ahead and uh, beat them. I'm not worried about the uh, Angels. I'm not worried about the A's. You just got to play better baseball against them. But this is why you're not going to have uh, two teams outside of the uh, AL East. The Yankees, Orioles, Rays, and Jays are all projected to have 85 wins or more because they're all pretty good at baseball right now. And so um, 
will they all end up that way? Maybe they'll beat each other up, but yeah. So the Mariners right now, even with their pitching being as bad as they have been like uh, Gilbert, he hasn't looked the same. Castillo has, hasn't looked the same. Their pitching has not been doing good, but their hitting has been doing okay. Yeah, that's right. And then um, after we tell the people about FanDuel, um, we'll talk more about this because I think it's some good stuff to talk about. And, I, and I'll tell you why I think it's okay to be this positive and it's not homerism. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel is America's number one sports, but go to FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet. An automatic win. Look, the NBA playoffs are here. They've started the play-in tournament, and there are some results that might surprise you, but going into it, no matter who you're cheering for, you can get in the action with FanDuel. Why? Because new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. You heard that right, $150, win or lose. NBA, NHL playoffs, and baseball's in full swing. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, Brett. So uh, let's go and continue the conversation we were having um, in a second. But I do want to make sure you check out uh, Michael Connor, every game, locked on Astros postcast. Uh, he does a great job breaking down the plays, uh, breaking down the games. And if you can't get enough uh, Astros talk, go and check us out. Of course, locked on Astros, we got you. Uh, but go and check out the Lo- locked on Astros postcast after every game with Michael Connor. So, Brett, um, let's go and continue this. Um, why? Why um, the Astros are six and fourteen? Right. Why is it okay to be optimistic? Well, number one, because for whatever reason we, we have, and I, I don't, I don't, you know, some people said, you know, it's Manfred versus the Astros and the reason why we have such a tough schedule. But the deal is if your schedule is very difficult in the very beginning of the year, it's got to be easier at the end of the year because there's 162 games. So there's no way that they have a gauntlet of, of a schedule like to do right now. They started out with all these games in a row. They get a lot more days off coming up especially towards the end of the season, they get a lot, they get three or four days off in, in like a certain month and, you know, in like a two or three week stretch. And so one of the reasons why I'm positive about this is JV's coming back um, from Valdez. I, I assume when he comes back that everything will be okay. Now we have no timetable on that. Luis Garcia and Jose Arquiti are both ahead of schedule. If Arquiti and, and Verlander, and um, Garcia are ahead of schedule, then when McCullers comes back, he fits into a bullpen spot. Um, You know, so I I think there's a lot of things. I think you have Jordan Alvarez who's hitting well. You have Jose Altuve hitting well. Mauricio Dubon hits well. Um, Jose Altuve. I mean, sorry. um, Sorry. Jose Abreu. I was trying to make a joke and I messed it up. Oh yeah, no, not no. Jose Abreu's <laughs> not factoring into my back, back of the base, best of base, well, baseball cards. So. Yeah, right. If he can turn it around, right. that would be a help. It was sure would be nice, Mister Abreu, for you to join the team. But also, team, it sure would be nice for y'all to hit with run scoring position. And look, my last point is this because I don't want to drag on with all these hits. You mentioned being the top in all these offensive categories. At some point, it's got to level out and the other things have to start happening where you actually start scoring runs, where you actually win extra inning games, where you actually win more games at home than you don't. So I'm a believer in the process. I'm a believer in the length of the season. I think if the season was shorter, if it was only 100 games, I would be very concerned. But we still got quite a few games left. Time is on our side. All right, so last year, the Houston Astros runners in scoring positions uh, batted 270. Wow. So they're batting way below where they typically do. So um, I think that they're going to um, – everything kind of returns to the mean, the median or mean, whatever it is, uh, at some point. I think that the Astros' offense will uh, find its stride, and uh, they'll figure out some 
if it's a batting order or they'll get somebody out of the lineup and start playing somebody else who's hot. Uh, they'll call somebody up and uh, maybe replace somebody, but they'll figure out the offense thing. I think the pitching is too good to be where it is once everybody's healthy. So I think there's a lot to be positive about. And I heard uh, a couple of people that live in Dallas in the Arlington area, and they said that uh, they are actually mad at the Rangers right now because they said uh, they um, the Astros are not going to be this bad for so long. They should have taken care of business. They should have uh, oh. beat the lame duck while they're down. And mm-hmm. so um, the Astros are going to get better. Everybody knows this. And so uh, is it guaranteed? No. Um, is the, Are they really going to go, what did I say, 70, what was the fan grade, uh, 78 and 64 to finish the right. season? Um, I think they would have to do better to actually make the playoffs to guarantee the playoffs, because I think one of these other teams are going to go on a little streak too. But honestly, Brett, I told you this before the show, it's like the Astros are like, here, here's the AL West. You want it? Here, You want it? You want it? Anybody want it? Nobody want it? All right, we'll keep it. Something like that. And so it's just like, they're trying to uh, mess it up as much as they can, and then we'll see what happens from there. Yeah, but this team is too good. Well, well you know, look, um, you have on here about Verlander expectations. I don't, I don't know that everybody thinks that Verlander is going to come back and throw a shutout, but I think, I think Verlander's presence, number one, mm-hmm. in the clubhouse, being active on the roster, going every fifth day, um, will be a huge boost. Having Verlander in there, and you know, not as a guy that you know going through his motions and going through the rehab, being a part of that game plan, him working with Diaz more and more, I think will be a huge, huge help. Look, Caratini um, has come in; he's had some big hits. Um, the bullpen, for the most part, you know, Martinez. I'm really not worried about him. He's given up a couple runs here or there. The problem is when the bullpen makes mistakes, if the offense isn't producing that's when it becomes even more important for them not to. But that's why we're talking about better times ahead. That's why we're talking about, look, with Justin Verlander coming back, if I can get 85% Verlander, that's better than no Verlander. Right. Um, if if Verlander can go out on the road, because he is going to start Friday against the Washington Nationals, they have him announced as the starter. It will be Justin Verlander versus Mackenzie Gore. Mackenzie Gore is off to a good start. He's 2-0 and with the 2.81 ERA, 23 strikeouts, a 1.19 whip. He does have 23, like, like I said, 23 strikeouts and only five walks. He's only given up five earned runs. So it's very important that if the Astros get runners on base, that they have to score them. They have to plate these runs because McKenzie Gore is having a very good start to a year on a Washington Nationals team that isn't really predicted to do much because the division that they are in, I mean, right now they're, they're, they're two games under 500, but gosh, they've got the Braves, the Phillies and the Mets in front of them. the Mets aren't even that good. And they're two games right. above 500. So that is your first matchup, Eric. Um, and then the next matchup, I'm really more, I'm, I'm intrigued, Eric, about the first two games, but I love the second game. Cause you got Ronel Blanco going against Trevor Williams. Both these guys are two and O both of them are sporting. Well, Blanco sporting a point one a one point eight zero ERA. Um, Trevor is sporting a one point one four WHIP, but Trevor Williams only has twelve strikeouts, where Ronel Blanco has sixteen. And even though he gave up a couple runs his last outing, oh, I'm sorry, a point eight six ERA. I think I said one point eight zero. He has a point eight six ERA under one with sixteen strikeouts. That should be a really really good matchup, and then. Our, I, I believe it's a three game series, um, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. You have Javier versus Parker on Sunday, and then the Astros have a day off, which is good. And then, they, and then they go to Chicago on that next Tuesday. So, a three game set with the Nationals, eight and 10. Look, Eric, if you can go into Washington and take these three games, you're now right. looking at a team that's nine and 14 on a three game winning streak with the day off. If they get two of three, I'll be happy. If they sweep, that's huge momentum, huge momentum. And then hopefully next week we'll hear more about uh, Fromber Valdez. 
Yes. So last year, uh, Justin Verlander's first start with the Mets was on May 14th. He came back, pitched five innings, allowed five hits, two earned runs, one strikeout, two home runs, and he threw 79 pitches. 52 of them were uh, strikes. So we'll see uh, what he does in this game. Uh, so he is coming back a little earlier than he did with the Mets last year. So that's a good thing for the Houston Astros. But there is hope that the Astros can rebound, and it starts with the Nationals. The Nationals have two more wins than the Astros do, but we know that the talent lies in Houston. So it's just a matter of who executes better, who takes advantage of the um, the young Nationals team. That's all I can say about that is because – uh, the Astros are a much better team. It's just they're not playing. They're playing uh, like they're they're a bottom dweller, but we know they're not. And teams right. around baseball know they're not. So, um, Brett, anything else? No, just um, look, keep the hope, keep the faith. We're not ignorant to what's going on, but we also see um, the good things, even though there's a lot of bad going on. I think there's more hope ahead. Stick with us. We're locked on Astros. We're your team every day. He's Eric, the man husband. I'm East Town Wheelhouse. And nobody's got you covered like we do. Y'all have a good one. And go Strohs and go and check out Jose Abreu's uh, baseball card. Tell, tell me what it says. Oh, I'll tell you what it says before we go here. 2022, 304 average. <laughs> <laughs>